In Power BI, we create multiple visuals where we include lot of default visuals, we include lot of custom visuals and so on. Now, whenever we are trying to create a report in Power BI, so what generally happens is that we always try to make a report with such an intention that the end user should go and interact with our particular report. Our client or customer should go and interact with our visual. That's what our intention being a Power BI developer. So now the point is that whenever we are trying to create a visual or whenever we are trying to create a report, if in the case, then we go and create a slicer, we go and create a bookmark, we go and create a page navigation, we go and create the buttons, what not. We do a lot of things, right? So with all these, the end customer or the end user, they can go and interact with the report. Now, creating a bookmark, switching the visual is a static way. But dynamically, is it possible to do that? Hi, I am M. Asif Hussain from Know Hub Academy. What are we going to learn in this video? We are going to learn and understand how to switch the visual dynamically without bookmarks in Power BI. So by the end of this video, you could able to get an idea on how we have to create a parameter, how we have to switch the visual without using a bookmark in Power BI. So let's work on it. My dear viewers, here I have a data. Okay. So now what I'm trying to do is that I am going and taking a clustered column chart here. So in this clustered column chart, what information I'm going to choose? The one that I'm going to choose is the category. Okay. So category, which I'm considering it in X axis and in the Y axis, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the average sales, which is the measure that I have created average of my sales column, which is under my orders table. Okay. So I have taken this one. If you do not want to take the category, if you would like to opt for region, you know, this is up to you, you know, whatever the categorical data that you would like to choose with it. So now what I'm trying to do in this particular uh, visual, if we generally talk about the formatting, what do we do? We go to X axis, we go and change the font style, the font size, the color of it. Okay. The title. Again, we follow the same where we go with the bold, we increase the font size, we make it black. All right. Again, in the Y axis also, we go and change it to bold. We increase it to 12. We make it black display units are in thousands or if it is an auto because we do not have something in uh, millions or billions or trillions. So let's be keep it in auto itself. All right. So we are done with this one. Again, when we come back to the title, in the title also, we are going to change it to bold. We are increasing. I'm making the same number of size and style in both X axis as well as in the Y axis. Okay. So now we are done with this X axis and Y axis and we have something called as title. So let me off the title as of now, as of now, let me switch off the title because I don't want to show the title as of now. And later on, I can switch it on and I can write whatever the title as per my convenience. Now what I'm trying to do, my dear viewers, here I'm taking a dummy measure as zero, two dummy measures I'm taking it, okay, D1 and D2. So this D1 and D2, I'm getting it into my Y axis, okay, this D1 and D2, what I'm trying to do, I'm getting it in my Y axis. Uh, under the columns, we have something called as layout, so that may, let me make it to the maximum. Okay, let me make it to the maximum. It depends upon how we are going to show it. Okay, now what I'm trying to do, if you see the error bars, under the error bars, we have the series, you know, I'm going and considering the D1 series and under the D1 series, I'm enabling the option where I'm adding the upper bound and lower bound here. So what is the upper bound? In this upper bound and lower bound, I had calculated the maximum sales using max function and the minimum sales using min function. Okay. So now what I'm doing, I'm adding the maximum sales that I have it in the upper bound. And in the same way, I'm adding the minimum sales in my lower bound. Okay. I'm adding the minimum sales and up maximum sales. Now the bar color, let me choose it black. Okay. The point, let me make it zero. Okay. The border color, if you want, you can add the border color. 
depending upon your requirement now this is done now the same thing i'm going to repeat it for the series d2 where i'm enabling it i have something called as upper bound and lower bound here so now in this upper bound and lower bound i am calculating the percentile of sales okay inclusive percentile inclusive is a dax function that i am choosing it here so i have to so let me consider the percentile percentile is up to you depending upon your requirement 65 percentile 55 percentile 85 percentile 95 75 whatever it might be it's up to you so i am taking two one is maximum and one is minimum so that's where i am going to add this particular 75th percentile in the upper bound and what I'm going to do, I'm adding the lower bound as 25th percentile. Okay, so this is the case. If you do not want to, if you do not want this one, you, know, you can go and even change it as per your convenience and requirement. Now we have this legend. So let me you know, remove this legend. Let me remove this legend. I'm just showing you how can we switch the visuals. All right. Now what I'm trying to do is that I'll come here to modeling. And under the modeling, I would like to go and create a parameter with a numeric range. Okay, that's my uh, requirement. So for this, what I'm trying to do, I'll go here to the new parameter and I will add a numeric range. Okay. So the parameter name, you can choose it, whatever you require. Okay, it's up to you. And then the data type, whole number or a decimal number. If you want to have a whole number, it's just, you know, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, whatever you'd like to choose it. But the decimal number, 2.65, 1.23. So something like this decimal number. Okay, so I would like to go with the whole number where the minimum value I would like to take it as zero and the maximum value I would like to take it as one and I would like to increment it with one. For example, one plus one is two. Two increment by one is three. Three increment by one is four. Four increment by one is five. Something like this. Okay, so ultimately the default one I am going and making it as zero. Okay, so I would like to add slicer to this page. That's why I'm going and clicking on create. So as soon as I have clicked on create, a new parameter will be created. Okay. A new parameter will be created. This parameter, what I'm trying to do is that I'm getting it here. Okay. I'm getting this parameter here. Now what I'm doing, I am going to the slicer settings and under the slicer settings, I'm going and considering it as tile where we have zero and one. That's what we have taken the minimum value and the maximum value okay so what i'm going to do i'll just switch off this multi select i will enable the single select okay i will enable the single select and i will off the slicer header i do not want to have the slicer header i do not want to have the title nothing okay so now this is a small uh, uh, let's consider that this is a, a parameter that i have considered there is no action happening when i'm just clicking on this zero and one to this particular visual okay so in order to do that so what i'm trying to do i'm going and creating one more new measure so what this new measure is doing in this new measure i have considered the if condition where the parameter that i have considered i'm assigning it as zero comma with the average sales okay if else condition okay if else condition so for this what i'm trying to do in this particular visual whichever i have created we have seen that we have created the average sales okay average sales now we are we have to remove this and i have to go and consider the new measure that i have calculated this one okay so now if you just look into it what's happening okay there are some changes happening here right so now even if i would like to show it to you so what i'm doing i have added a another measure but still there is some problem okay so now what i'm trying to do i have this d1 and d2 i'm doing a small change for this d1 so in this dummy one what i'm doing the parameter that i have considered i am assigning it as one comma zero and the same thing i am doing it for my dummy two measure as well where i'm considering if condition and the parameter that i have considered equal to one comma zero all right so what i'm trying to do i'm getting this dummy measures here dummy one and this dummy to measure under my y-axis okay now if you see the difference if i just click on the visuals okay if i just click on the visuals the chart is getting changed okay it is getting switched chart chart is getting switched depending upon the parameter that we have considered the minimum parameter and the maximum parameter the minimum value and the maximum value that we have considered the parameter now the same thing what we can do we can do even using a bookmark as well so 
what happens in the bookmark now let me consider that we have this south east west and central these are the four regions now if i would like to see only the south region if i create a bookmark then only south will be visible rest of the three will be hidden where it will show the switched visual information so in the same way what we have done here we have done that whatever the uh, bookmark is doing apart from bookmark that is it is static way apart from bookmark dynamically also we can go and switch the visual using the parameter so that's what we have considered it here in this particular visual so using a bookmark is also an easy way but using the minimum uh, measures using the minimum uh, very easy dax functions we can go and create the visual like this so you, the requirement might be different the data set might be different the values might be different the scenarios might be different in your case in my case okay so whatever the information that i am showing it to you you can consider it as a uh, as an information that without bookmark also we can go and switch the visuals that is a concept of creating this video okay so this video helps you to understand the uh, requirement that without bookmark also there is a way that we can go and switch the visual in power bi so my dear viewers today in this video we have learned how to switch the visual dynamically without using a bookmark in power bi so thank you for choosing now academy as your source for it knowledge we are always here to help you to navigate the tech world if you have any questions do not hesitate to reach out it's been a pleasure sharing this information with you stay curious and keep learning